Thanks to its ooey gooey appeal, raclette has become trendy and in demand at food markets around the world. It hails from Switzerland and is used in fondue. I'm using it to take my mac and cheese to crazy new heights. Today, we're preparing ancho chili mac and cheese with cilantro creme fraiche. I'm Chef Michael Williams, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. There are certain ingredients that will instantly upgrade your home kitchen. Ancho chilies are one of those ingredients that, you know, take your meal to a different level. That's what we're doing today. Ancho chili mac and cheese with cilantro creme fraiche. Let's make some magic. I am already underway actually. Macaroni is boiling and it's just about to come out of the pot. Now I wanna run you through this. This macaroni is cooked el dente, yeah? That means firm, right? Like not quite ready to, to you know, enjoy. It's firm to the tooth, firm to the bite. El dente is the direct translation. So what we wanna do here is we wanna cool this pasta down. Just gotta grab my spatula here. Make sure we don't waste any. We wanna let this pasta cool down without running water on it. We'll lose some of the great starchy flavor and the goodness. So, strain it off, put it onto a tray. And then we'll let that cool down just like so. What I will do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of olive oil and drizzle that over top so that the pasta doesn't stick together. Really important step. Otherwise you're gonna have big clumps of pasta all stuck together. So just a tiny little drizzle, just enough to keep it lubricated. Give that a bit of a stir and then we'll come back and stir that again in about a minute's time or a few minutes time just to let it kind of, you know, steam itself, cool down a little bit. And the reason we do this cooking it a little, a little bit extra al dente is so that we're not rushing to get the pasta cooked and get it into the sauce and running around like a crazy person. We don't wanna do that. We wanna be calm and smooth and have fun, right? So we'll let that cool down. Now we're gonna get onto our sauce. By the way, macaroni shells, two of the best pastas for sauce. They're like vehicles, right? They got all this room inside the pasta here. You look in there, right? Nice little tube that can get filled up with sauce. Perfect shell, like a little mini bowl. Those are your two choices for like a mac and cheese kind of sauce. So we've got a couple of steps to do before we're ready to make our actual cheese sauce. And the first step is gonna be making an ancho chili sauce. Now, really, really simple. We've got our blender here. I'm just gonna get some ingredients going in this blender and puree them up and then we're gonna heat them up in a pot, okay? So two tomatoes two serrano chilies, half of a sweet onion. So let's go ahead and start with our sweet onion here. So I'm gonna cut this in half. Because we only want half of this, it's a big onion. We'll give it a bit of a head start so our blender doesn't have to struggle to chop that. So just a rough chop on those onions and in they go. Okay, and then as mentioned, we're gonna go with two tomatoes, I've got some nice ripe, vine ripened tomatoes here, two serrano chilies, they're like jalapenos, but just with a little bit more of a kick, and garlic, so let's go ahead and get those in. So same thing again, just gonna give it a bit of a head start so that things can kind of get into the path of the blade. And now with the chilies, if you love heat, just leave all of the seeds and veins. If you want the sauce a little bit milder, you can remove some of the seeds and the veins. And the best way to do that is to get your chili into quarters. Once it's in quarters, it's really easy to just remove the seeds and the veins like so. Okay, and I like, I like heat personally. So how I do it is I, I do some seeds, and remove some. So with half, I'm gonna take out and half I'm leaving in. They're already in the blender there. So there we've got our serranos, a little bit of garlic, two or three cloves or four or five. With Mexican flavors, it's one of the predominant flavors. So there's always lots of garlic in Mexican cooking. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four. Let's go there. 
And then we'll move on to next steps. So, ancho chili, as mentioned. Beautiful spice, you can buy this in powder form now. It's a really, really tasty chili. Kind of smoky, uh, got like a you know chocolatey kind of tobacco flavor to it. We're gonna put in a couple of teaspoons. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Always break out the measuring spoons and, and cups if you're more comfortable with that. And I think we're ready to blend this up. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. Just before I do that though, I'm gonna get a pot heating up on the stove because that's the next step is we wanna cook this. So let's go ahead and get this heating. While this pot is heating up, let's go ahead and get this pureed. We wanna get this nice and smooth. Our blender is ready to roll. I did forget something, the cilantro. I'm like, yeah, there's definitely something missing. So here it is. We've got our cilantro here. I'm just gonna cut the bottom part of this off because we don't want all of the stem action there. So nice handful of mostly leaves. In that goes, now we're ready to blend. Let that get nice and smooth. There we go. So this is ready to go into our pot. Let's go ahead and get some oil in here. So the idea is, is we're gonna kind of fry this sauce. So the pot's nice and hot. I'm gonna get some oil in now. You can see how hot that is. And then in goes our sauce. Careful, because it's liquid and it will splash a little bit, or it could. Make sure we don't lose any of this. Oh, the smells, smells incredible. The garlic, the chilies, the tomato. We'll give that a bit of a stir. And sometimes, sometimes you just gotta get messy in the kitchen. That's what we're doing right now. Get our blender jar out of the way here. So I'm gonna turn that heat down just a touch. We'll grab a cloth, clean as we go. That's the beautiful thing about induction. It's so easy to clean. This, this smells so beautiful. It's actually bringing a tear to my eye because I just love those chilies. They burn and they feel so good. So I gotta dry my tear here. Bear with me. All right, looks like we need another clean because this is jumping all over the place. And you know what, I, I, I cook hard. I set off smoke alarms, I make messes. I'm just like anybody else, right? It's all part of it. It's all part of the process. You get those beautiful smells, those flavors. It's just, it's, you, you gotta do it. So this is getting there, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and get our zest. I'm gonna grab my zester and zest up this lime. So the, the zest here, it's a, just an extra little step, right? Brings in an extra element of that lime. Well worth the time. And this sauce, you can make, you know, double, triple, quadruple batch, and it keeps for months in the fridge. On top of that, you can actually can it. Cans really well, just as is. Because of the lime juice, it's perfect to preserve. So. In goes the zest. Let's go ahead and get our juice in there. Here's my juicer. Oh, that smells so good. You know what I forgot though? Salt, we gotta get some salt in there. We got our ancho chili powder. Definitely need a bit of salt. So two key steps now are done and ready to go. Things are looking great. We're gonna be back later in the show to pull together our ancho chili mac and cheese with cilantro creme fraiche. But before that, we're putting away the apron and hitting the road. We'll be back right after the break. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions. 
an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. I'm out here sweating away in the beautiful Blinkensop Valley. Nothing but bees and raspberries all around me. Just about to meet Rob Gailey. Rob, how are you? I'm doing well today. This is fantastic. I love this. It's like an airport. There's bees everywhere. Uh, everywhere, and they are our best friends. Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, no bees, no food. Yeah, yeah, we'd be in trouble without bees, right? Yeah, absolutely. May I, may I pick and eat? Yeah, go ahead. These look amazing. This is how I eat all day, every day. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of your strawberries. I didn't realize you did raspberries so well, and they're incredible. Well, thank you very much. These are delicious. These are actually, raspberries are out of season. We are now in uh, heading towards the end of August. Yeah. And um, this is a different kind of raspberry. I only grow this exclusively for our market. Okay. The other ones, first year they grow a primal cane. The second year the primal cane gets tied to this wire and becomes a floral cane, produces the fruit the second year. Okay. Now this is an ever bearing raspberry plant. It actually produces fruit on the primal cane. So at the end of the year, we cut these all right to the ground. And in uh, May, these shoots come up and actually produce fruit that year in August. Okay. That looks like a great one right there. That's a beauty. So, you know, raspberries, not just for eating, pureeing them into salad dressings, Heck, having them whole in a salad. My smoothie in the morning. Oh, you, you can't, I mean, smoothies, how can you go wrong? And they're so loaded with nutrition, like so much good stuff you can get out of berries. Blueberries, I think you grow blueberries as well, is that right? Absolutely, I do. And the good thing about the berries is, is I freeze a lot for myself. So all winter long, I'm eating my own berries in yeah. the winter. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a little bit of sunshine on a cold winter morning, right? Mm -hmm. Raspberries or blueberries or strawberries out of the freezer. I'm putting a bit of a dent in your margins here. I hope that's okay. That's okay, yeah. we'll, we'll grow more tomorrow. Okay. One of my big concerns about buying, we'll call them conventional berries, is you know, possible pesticide application. Is that something I should be concerned about? Not at all. I mean, you're watching me eat this. Yeah. I feed it to my children every day. Yeah. I always go with biological controls all the time. If I make an application of a bad insecticide, yeah. um, I would kill all my beneficials. My berry fields this year, I put out over five or 50,000 Ambulesis glasses to eat all the spider mites, so yeah. I don't need the miticide. Okay. I put out 36,000 um, lady beetle this year, yeah. or lady bugs to you, yeah. uh, to eat the aphids. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is build the good guys. Right. But if I try and spray the bad guys, I take out everybody. Including this airport of bees. And right? my bees. Yeah, yeah. So why yeah. do you think I'm going to do that? Yeah, you don't want to do that, because mm -hmm. they're your friends. Mm -hmm. Rob, this has been an absolute pleasure. I've learned a ton about what, what's happening here, and what you guys are doing. So I love having you guys come out. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what though? I think I'm lost though. Yeah, I hope you know the way out of here. I know how to get out. Alright. It is back into our kitchen. We're pulling together our ancho chili mac and cheese. I've got lots of stuff on the go here. I need to bring you up to speed, okay? So we've got some bacon that is underway. I make a bacon crumble to go on top of the mac and cheese. Once it's finished, it's a beautiful garnish. So we're gonna get this bacon nice and crispy and then add some breadcrumbs to it. I've got some roux underway here already. Equal parts butter and flour, which I've cooked until we've developed a nice caramelized color here. So this is a bit of a brown roux. I'm now ready to add in my whipping cream, okay? A whole liter of whipping cream goes into here. Now the key is to make sure we don't end up with any clumps of flour. So what I need to do is add this cream slowly. I'm gonna add about you know, yay much. Make sure that gets whisked and incorporated. And then once I'm happy that there is no kind of clumps of flour, I can go ahead and add the rest of it. So let's go ahead and add the rest of our cream. And that's the first step to our sauce. This is the base of it. It's like a thickened, rich cream base, which we're gonna then add in our ancho chili sauce, which we've already made. Let's give our bacon a bit of a stir here. There's some, uh, you know, a little bit of excess fat here, which I'm gonna pour off. Pour off the excess and I will save that. Don't discard that, make use of it. It's fantastic, it's a great cooking oil. You can keep it uh, at room temperature for several weeks or in the fridge for several months. Come back to it whenever you need it. 
let's get our cheese grated, okay? I've got some beautiful little qualicum raclette, one of my favorite melting cheeses. I got one eye on the cream and one eye on my cheese grater. Yeah. Can you do that? Can you split your eyes? I can't, I was, I was just kidding, it was a joke. All right, once our cheese is grated, we got about 200 grams here, which is just perfect. We'll melt that into our cream. We'll get our ancho chili sauce into the cream. Things are coming together beautifully. Give that a quick stir. Give this a quick stir. Let's go ahead and add our breadcrumbs, actually. I've got a nice big tum tub of homemade breadcrumbs. I always hold on to extra little bits of bread that have you know, gone past their prime. Make sure you dry them out. And always, it's always about saving, making use of. So we'll give this a stir. And I think what I'll do is I'll just turn the heat off on this at this point. Now we're gonna get our ancho chili sauce into our cream, okay? So this is just, I mean, Imagine it, all those different ingredients, all that flavor, it is just bursting, singing, singing if you will, with so much great flavor. I'm gonna use about half. So even the way this recipe is structured, you still end up with some ancho chili sauce left over. You know what I wanna do? I wanna, I love this sauce so much. I wanna taste this as is. So good. Mm. So that's now incorporated into our cream. We're ready to melt our cheese into here. And there's enough heat left in this pot, so I'm just gonna actually turn it off. We'll stir this and melt it in. It takes about a minute or so. You wanna keep stirring it so it incorporates nicely and kinda emulsifies itself into that cream. Let's turn off our bake and crumble. We're ready to pull this together. So I'm gonna actually scoop this right in. Maybe now that we're getting that cold, you know, cooled down pasta in there, we'll turn our heat back up and bring it to a simmer. I don't think I'm gonna need quite all of this. I actually just eyeballed it and, you know, dumped a little bit extra in. So let's start with that. We're gonna plate now. So let's make sure we're nice and clean. There's one thing you may be wondering, where's the cilantro creme fraiche, right? We're gonna get there, we're almost there. Let's get our plates. Let's get this bowl right here, and here's our creme fraiche. The details of how to make this are in the recipe. Check the show notes. So that's a homemade creme fraiche, which oddly enough is like fresh sour cream. Go figure. We'll take a little bit of this into here. And we're just gonna puree that, which is gonna make a beautiful green creme fraiche. Right? How good does that look? You know what? I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's a little bit too saucy, so let's get the rest of that pasta in there. Apparently, I poured perfectly. If there is such thing of a too saucy mac and cheese, I did it. Okay, let's hit the plate, shall we? Show you how to finish this off nice. Start off with some of that mac and cheese. Beautiful, just the way it is. Lots of great flavors with that ancho chili sauce. Let's get some of that bacon crumble on there. Just like it was a baked mac and cheese, we're kind of replicating that a little bit in an easy way. And we'll finish it off with some of this beautiful cilantro creme fraiche. The final touch, some bright, beautiful green. And as I said, I've staked claim to this plate right here. This is probably one of my all time favorite dishes. There you have it. Ancho chili mac and cheese, the perfect comfort food, you know, with a little bit of sass. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. 
There's only one way to up the game on a delicious mac and cheese, and that is with the perfect beverage pairing. Here in the kitchen, Todd from Phillips, thank you so much for coming down. Thanks for having me. Mac and cheese day, wouldn't miss it for the world. Right on, All so right. yeah, a little bit of a heads up on this. I gave you ancho chili, yeah. nice bacon crumble, we've got a cilantro creme fraiche. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on pairing this up? Immediately, the first beer that jumped to mind for me was Hop Circle India Pale Ale, our okay. IPA. It's a really hop forward, yep. West Coast IPA that I think will pair beautifully with this. You okay. know, it's uh, it features some really vibrant hops that are expressive. Hops are the spice of beer, so they really impart a lovely floral aroma. Thank you. They give a lot of bitterness, but that bitterness is balanced by the malts we choose. You can see the beer's got a gorgeous honey tone to it. Yeah. And you know, it looks really inviting. So when we get this beer to our nose here, we should get really expressive jump of Ooh, hop aroma. It smells delicious. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's so good. So refreshing. So refreshing. What I love about IPAs with a dish like mac and cheese is the ability of hops to really cut through that okay. creaminess. Okay, well, So I'm we'll gonna, see if that stands up yeah, to it. Yeah, I'm gonna put that to the test. I'm gonna join you on that. Mm. What do you think? Wow, that's spectacular. One of my favorite mac mm. and cheese. Definitely wanted to wow. head right back here though. Ooh. You like it? Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> nice. Oh, this is great. great pairing. This is an awesome yeah. pairing, yeah. So you guys are not new to the beer game. You guys have been doing awesome for a long time. Tell us a little bit about Phillips. Coming up to our 20th year anniversary this year, right. which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've been making great beer for a long time here in Victoria. And some of our feature beers are really, you know, uh, been with us a long time. Hop Circle, for example, has been one of our original beers. Right. But we feature a lot of new, fun, exciting styles. Yeah. You can check out things like in our Hop Box, which features three of our other hop forward beers. Cool. And also, I think, would work equally as delicious with yeah. this meal. Yeah, really? Any of them you figured? Yeah, I think okay. so. Hops is that real power to, to balance against cheese. It's probably one of my favorite pairings. You know what? If this is gonna be on the menu, I think that's your perfect pairing. You've nailed it. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Yeah. Check out our website where you'll find the details on today's show. I'm Chef Mike, and don't forget, dinner's better when we eat it together. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.